Okay, hold on. I'm gonna I'm gonna pause. I, I muted alerts. So I can kind of just like talk uninterrupted for a second. So so a lot of you guys kind of already know. I mean, uh, I'd be surprised if you didn't. It, it's literally all over the internet. We had a bad day yesterday. Wreckful. He um, he passed away yesterday. Whether you watched him or didn't watch him or whatever, Wreckful had a really big impact on uh, streaming as a whole. You know, for those of us in, in Austin, people knew him. I didn't know him quite as long as some of these other guys, right? Because I'm kind of new on Twitch relative to, to a lot of these <clears throat> a lot of these other guys. It's something that definitely is, is um, I think for everybody involved, it's pretty jarring. Everybody knows about Wreckful's struggles and, and the things that he dealt with in, in the last few years because he was very, very open about it. He, he talked about a lot of stuff that uh, most people would not want to share with uh, their closest friends, let alone basically the entire world. Wreckful made a really big impact on a lot of people's lives, especially a lot of people who maybe maybe shared uh, some of the same struggles that he had because they had someone that they can look to, look up to. Um, I mean, uh, Wreckful was a big part of Dr. K and Healthy Gamer launching, right? I mean, that kind of kind of taken off. So it's it's his impact on on Twitch and on people is it, honestly it's immeasurable. I guess I'll go ahead and tell you guys kind of what happened yesterday. Um, I, I don't I don't want to say everything because I think some things just kind of aren't my place to talk about, and I haven't really been paying attention to everybody else's streams so much, so I don't know what all has been talked about. Uh, but I'll just kind of talk about like kind of what happened from my perspective yesterday, just kind of seeing the series of events, because I think I think whenever it happened, most people were asleep. Most people that, that we knew were asleep. I, I basically yesterday, my, my day yesterday was, I woke up, I saw I saw the, the first tweet, uh, he, where he tweeted about Becca. I'm looking through the, like the replies and stuff. I don't think anything that happened yesterday was like a direct cause of anything happening. I, I don't know. This is something that has been like brewing over and building up over years and years and years. I saw that, then I saw the next tweet where he says like, I kind of feel bad for people who have to deal with my stuff and sometimes people aren't in control of their actions whenever they feel this way. Now when I saw that tweet, I thought that was maybe like him, I thought it was about the previous tweet. I thought he was tweeting about the tweet, but then that's whenever I saw Blue's tweets, I was like, wait, what the hell is this? And you just immediately, unfortunately, like that, that's kind of like, when I saw Blue's tweets, that was kind of like the assumption. I think a lot of people had that assumption, again, looking at replies. So that, that's whenever like I called Miz and I tried calling Miz. He called me back. Uh, and, and like, I mean, we, we have like a streamer discord and everybody's kind of like, wait, what's going on? And everybody's trying to like get a hold of everybody. And that's kind of when, when we, we heard about what happened. That's, that's basically how, how, like how, how my morning went. Right. And then, then the whole day it was just kind of like us talking and, uh, I was like on the phone talking to people and, but yeah, last night we went over to Miz's house and it was like Barry was there with, uh, with Mitch and, uh, Merck came over and we, we talked to Merck and, uh, just that, that whole crew. So, um, yeah, I mean, it, it, just kind of talking about the situation, but this is something that, um, I mean, I, I hadn't hung out with Recful in a few months because of the, the Corona stuff. And last time I talked to him was in DMs. Yeah. Maybe, maybe like a month or two ago. I don't remember how long it was. One thing that I noticed is, and, and this is, I, I'll talk about this part and then I, I kind of want to talk about this and then kind of let's move on with the rest of the stream, whatever. Uh, I'm sure it'll come up a little bit, but I, I kind of just want to talk about stuff and then move on. Um, Recful has been around for a long time, or he, he had been around for a long time. And uh, I, I keep seeing things, whether it was stuff with Mitch, stuff with, with I talked to Mitch a little bit last night, uh, stuff with Train, stuff with all these different people, right? Like people, like people like develop like beefs and they go from good to bad to neutral to good to and, and all, all kinds of stuff. And it kind of sucks because especially talking to Mitch last night, like all, all the, like all the beefs and all the arguments and, and whatever that people might have, like all, all the disagreement, like it doesn't just seem inconsequential. It, it kind of is because at the end of the day, now it's like, okay, like you don't know when, you're not going to get a chance to, to squash the beef anymore, you know, and just kind of seeing, seeing that. And you see so much fighting and bickering and back and forth uh, uh, about so many things in the world between your friends, between whoever. And when it really comes down to it, it's not worth it. The last time Rekful and I hung out, it was with Destiny and, and Raj and, uh, and Austin. Mr. Show. 
a lot of you guys know my deal with um, kind of some of the stuff that I was I was struggling with back in November time and this and that. And I, I just really wasn't happy with the state of my channel and I wasn't happy with the state of Classic WoW. And, and uh, I, I felt like I... I felt like I was getting like attacked everywhere I looked. I felt like I was I was playing. I, I don't want to get too much into my stuff there, but I, I didn't feel good. Uh, and I was talking to Reckful about it. Reckful pointed out to me that really uh, that kind of stuck with me, and I'm still working on. I dwell way too much, and I think this is something that a lot of people struggle with: is is dwelling. Whenever things go bad, just kind of being stuck on it and not being able to move on. I know that this is something that has certainly been the case for me. And if you've been watching my classic streams for the last 10 months, you kind of know what I went through there. And that's just how it relates to me, right? I got to figure it out and I got to move on. Wreckful, both as a friend and as a streamer, he really helped a lot of other people despite his own struggles. And I, I think a lot of that had to do with his openness, right? Like a lot of people tell, tell me that they feel like my streams are very open and honest and, and I, I kind of, you know, like I ham it up sure sometimes, not as much as I used to. I feel like Wreckful is, is, it was just like a whole nother level, right? Like any, any problems he had, any, anything, like he, he puts everything out there, right? Which in turn makes him very vulnerable um, in a lot of ways, right? And then you see this whenever you, you go on different like uh, subreddits or and it's places on the internet and then you see people like talking about uh, talking poorly about someone it's like look there's a lot of people who struggle with a lot of this stuff and it helps a lot of people because it's like okay maybe if I'm struggling with this thing and I see this guy who I look up to and this guy's arguably the best wow arena player ever you know th that's a guy that I look up to and then he's struggling with the same thing I'm struggling. Like that helps a lot of people, right? Like somebody who's in the chat watching, whatever. I don't want to stick on this too long. Um, I wanted to talk a little bit. I think I think some people expect me to say something. Like like I wasn't friends with Reckful for like super long. There's other guys who, I mean, like I'm, I'm, I'm hurting for some of these other guys who've, who've known Reckful for years and years and years. Whether or not that you, you watched him, this guy made a massive impact on the lives of literally thousands of people, either directly or indirectly by making an impact on you as a viewer or maybe making an impact on a streamer that you watch and then indirectly making an impact on you. You see what I'm saying? Or, or like I said, the stuff with Dr. K and Healthy Gamer and, and he kind of gave Dr. K a platform and, and Dr. K is helping thousands of people. But like there's people saying like, okay, well, you know, something should have been done or whatever. This isn't something that anything that was done yesterday or last week or any, any, this isn't anything that, that I think anybody could have done in, in, you know, immediately, uh, I don't I don't think it could have done anything. This is something that like has been brewing for years and years and something that Reckful's been struggling with for a really long time. And I and I do think it's kind of unfair, especially the people who are who are closer to him than I was. I don't think it's fair to to them to say that like you know there's something else they could have done or anything like that. Like I mean that's like a heartbreaking feeling, right? And there's there's people who might feel that way naturally, but it's it's just not fair to to say that cuz people don't know. They they have no idea how much that you know uh, you know other people have been uh, trying to help as much as they can. I saw some stuff about that, and I, I just don't think, I don't think it's fair to those guys. I really don't. Don't forget all the good times and all the smiles that Reckful shared with, with literally thousands of people and the, the positive impact he made on so many lives despite his own struggles. And even though he struggled himself, I think his openness and his willingness to share that with the world like his pain, it was other people's healing in a really, really weird way because it, it, it made people relatable. It made people feel like they weren't alone. I, I think the feeling of loneliness is one of the worst feelings that you could possibly have. I think Ruckville helped a lot of people with that. Yeah, AOE healing. Yeah. That's one thing that I think people should learn is that they're not alone. There's going to be someone out there, right? There's going to be people out there that, that want to accept you and, and want to help and are going to want to be your friends. You can start in Discord. You can start and in, in get involved in a stream community. It doesn't have to be mine, right? Get get started in a stream community. Play a game. There's a reason why so many of us, I mean, so, so many people, like they, a lot of people at WoW, stuck on this game for years and years. WoW is a great game. This is an amazing game. But it's not about the game that, that makes it so good. The reason why people keep playing WoW hardly has to do with just the game. A lot of it has to do with the people and getting involved in the communities and the friends that they make in that game.
I remember whenever I quit WoW, hard quit WoW, like at the beginning of Wrath, and it was because I didn't have anyone to play with. I, I felt like all my friends had quit, you know? I met some people online when I had no one around me. It was never suicidal or depressed, but I felt alone. They helped me day to day just with the small interactions we had. Yeah, exactly. Have you seen Keem is attacking Asmin? I think we gotta stop with this bullcrap. This whole attacking of, of uh, like, streamers and people, and it, it's, it's gotta stop. What, did Asmin say something slightly wrong and somebody's gonna throw a fit about it? Wow, okay. Literally, I, like, I just opened up LSF. This is like the first thing I see. Yeah, ironically enough. I, I don't know, man. It, it's just like, people, people do things that are stupid. I mean, you're, you're alive multiple multiple hours a day like dude if i if i'm doing a 12 hour stream right if i'm doing a 12 hour stream do you know how many tv show episodes that is that's like including commercials that's like 24 episodes that's like m longer than a, a season of a tv show in one day and it's all live it's not scripted it's not edited right well i mean i guess if you're putting on a show that might be scripted maybe but like you, you get my point right like it's mistakes are going to happen. Somebody is going to accidentally say something stupid. Somebody is going to accidentally do something stupid. It's so stressful to have to think that I can misspeak or uh, I can do something that's not right. And then all of a sudden, like it haunts you forever when it's like, look, like it's, it's a mistake and you can, you can learn from it and you can move on at a certain point. It's like, you can meme on something for a little bit and it's, it's funny. Sure. Whatever. Like uh, it's banter, but then you kind of move on at a certain point. It's like, okay, dude, like we get it, like get creative. Uh, culture toxicity messed up. Yeah, like it just, it sucks, man. Especially if people have been streaming for that many years. Like I've only been streaming for three years. You know, I, I was on YouTube for a while and then I switched to Twitch. But then to, to, to see these other people, like you think if somebody hasn't been streaming, if somebody's been streaming for eight years, 10 years, heck yeah, they're going to make some mistakes. Obviously, you're going to hate them forever for it. What did, like, think about it. All these people who don't have a camera on them almost all day, every day for the last 10 years. The streamers put themselves out there. They should expect it. So that's fair. That mentality that you have is, is what takes people and doesn't turn them into, like it, it takes people away from being people and their characters. Streamers are people. It's very different than a, a character on a TV show or whatever. In some ways, in some ways, yeah, maybe it is the same, right? Like you don't have the same sort of personal connection, but uh, you kind of do because it's very, I noticed this growing up and I would listen to the radio. Uh, I, I would listen to the, ra <clears throat> I would listen to the radio on my way to school. I would drive to school and I would listen to the radio 30 minutes every morning. And uh, I would listen to like morning sports talk radio. And I, and I noticed over time that I felt like, and this was before I watched streams or anything, uh, I noticed over time that I felt like I had a personal connection with the radio hosts. I had a personal connection with the radio hosts and like, it's like, oh, I know their stories. It's like, I, I've known them for like however long. I feel like I've known them for years, but like I've never actually met them or talked to them, but it's because they share these stories with me uh, all day, every day. They're talking about stuff, whatever. They share their opinions. I agree. I disagree, whatever. Now, fast forward eight years later, I'm streaming. I'm kind of in a similar position. But there's an additional layer to that, and it's the fact that there is a per depending on who you are. Not all streamers do this, but I'm very like I'm very interactive with chat. I, I go, I look at my Discord, I talk to offline chat. I'm talking to Discord. Uh, I try and respond to people's messages, uh, their DMs and whispers and stuff. I try. Sometimes I just miss stuff because my brain is like sensory overload all day every day. So there's now an additional layer of connection there. So people feel really people have the ability, I guess, to feel connected. Right? Streamers are human. They see and read everything. And when, when you go online and, and everywhere you look is just hate or something about something you did like four years ago. And I mean, dude, uh, there's, there's people who get hate for stuff that happened before I started streaming. Before any single one of anybody in chat had any idea who I was. Like there's people that still get hate for stuff that happened before that. Now, is XUC really human? Okay, well, except for X. No, I'm just kidding. But like the, the um, <clears throat> it's, it's, it's one of those, it, it's one of those things that, that I hope that starts to change and people start to understand that um, the guy on the other side of the monitor is a real person.
and I like I've I've struggled with it too. I'm I'm not somebody who's grown up with being hated, right? Like I've had times where I've gotten made fun of. I've had times where it's been mostly banter, right? Like it doesn't always feel good, but it's been mostly banter. But I, I've never felt like hated until. I mean, there, there was times this last year, right, with the classic WoW stuff. And I guess just to share share my piece a little bit, for me, I mean, like, I felt like I had invested in a community and a game for the last, like, two years. I mean, like, literally after BlizzCon two years ago, I had, like, a five-hour meeting with uh, Blizzard about the classic announcement and kind of what they were planning on. And, like, I had, like, a list of this is bad, this is bad, this is bad. But, like, I was, I was very, like, heavily invested into classic, Right, this is something that I, I wanted to be good. I was passionate about the game. I knew there was tons and tons of people who were passionate about this game. And like, it kind of like turned out that like, I, I happened to be the guy. I mean, like somebody at Blizzard literally told me, they said the reason why they, they like, from the private server scene, I was like the one guy who they like looked at their content and I was like, okay, well, this guy's not crazy. <laughs> so, like, <laughs> so, so yeah. Um, but then I, I felt like I had so much like personal personal investment in this game. And then whenever Classic comes out, it wasn't really until the beta, the beta came out and then all of a sudden everybody hates on streamers. And I'm like, wait, where did all this hate come from? And it's, they were just mad or jealous that like streamers got into beta. I mean, do you remember when Pokemon got the Classic beta? Pokemon got Classic WoW beta and people were livid, just furious. <laughs> My my account from 15 years ago. I just I, I have, I've been a sub since November 2004, and this girl, this this woman, got access to classic beta, and I didn't. It's like, dude, like, do you not understand business? Do you not understand marketing? Like, why would you not give it to the biggest female streamer on the platform? Like, people just don't understand this, right? Obviously, Pokemon's gonna get, dude. Pokemon's gonna get any sort of video game beta that she wants, right? Especially if like she doesn't actively play the game and now you have an opportunity to show the game off to a new audience. Like these are these are people that are like, they don't understand these things, right? But it was just, it was all streamer hate, dude. It led into classic and it was like, there were people that were like, this is our server. You can, the, the, these streamers can't play on my server, okay? You're not allowed to play here. If you play here, we're gonna harass you. And it's like, dude, what? Like you, you realize a big, like a big part of like, classic happening was streamers getting behind and, and pushing for classic right yes there was lots of people who weren't streamers who also wanted classic sure a big push and and a lot of like a lot of it came from streamers were very vocal about it soda got so much hate soda was one of the first guys freaking waving the flag for classic like four years ago but like it's it's not it's not that like people just assume these things about about streamers or streamer communities and all these things it's like dude it, it's it's so dumb right i mean there's still people like i'll go into a crossroad battleground there's still people who hate on me or other people from from the server that i play on it's like oh there's a streamer there's a streamer it, it's, it's just dumb right but these things kind of add up these things add up over time and it doesn't feel good i remember any sort of decision i made i've like i've never i've never felt this i never felt the amount of hate that I was getting, I look back on it and I feel like so much of it was just out of jealousy, dude. Like people don't even know. Like I, I got an onslaught girdle, right? I got the first onslaught girdle that dropped in our in our guild. Um, first off, I'm the guild leader, right? Of course, of course, the guild leader at the beginning of classic launch when an item like onslaught girdle drops, a thousand percent, the one guy that you know is always going to be in the guild and always going to be around, is a thousand percent justified to to get the loot, right? Always one. Two, people don't even know this. We had one, they don't know, they're not in the guild, they're not in the raid. We had one Fury Warrior and one Rep Paladin in our first raid. We were stacked with mages because we were trying to get the run in early and all the mages boost, 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 just like level super fast, right? Guild, well, it wasn't even guild drama. Nobody cared, right? Nobody in the guild cared. Every, in fact, everybody in the guild said, take it. So it was me and Naxa. I whisper Naxa and I say, Naxa, what do you want to do? I whisper the Fury Warrior. I say, what do you want to do? Do, do you want to roll? I, I'm, I'm putting balls in your court. Do you want this? Do you want to roll on this? What do you want to do? And then he tells me, no, no, you should have it. You know, you're, you, you deserve it. This is your thing. Uh, you, you deserve to have the first one. And I said, are you sure? And he's like, yeah. Like, okay. So then I got the first onslaught girdle, right? Rep prio, all that stuff. It's the meme. That's where the meme started on private server. You know what happened? Max, I got an onslaught girdle a few weeks later, right? But then there's people just 
hate, hate, hate. Just like, oh, I can't believe he would do this and whatever. Yeah, and it's just like, dude, people are just hate. And it's like, you know what? Most of these people don't even play classic, I think, or hadn't played classic. They hadn't played vanilla. They don't understand that like Onslaught Girdle, we happen to get lucky enough to get one week one. That item wasn't even supposed to be in the game until a month before Blackwing Lair, but they didn't have progressive itemization or uh, the MC progression stuff. Yeah, but they don't even know. Like these aren't vanilla WoW players. These aren't people who play. They're just people who want to hate. There's a lot of hate inside the Twitch community, and I think people wanted to avoid that. I don't think that's where it came from. The hate did not start until Classic Beta. It didn't. The, there was no like the Classic community on Twitch was awesome, super supportive. I mean, I, I'll tell you, dude. Me, stay safe. Tips like these. These other guys. There are tons of Classic content creators. Tons of Classic streamers. Uh, Guzu, I mean, the, I, I, I could name like a hundred people, right? Lazanta, the, the, we had to get by by not streaming private servers for like two, three years until Classic came out. And the, the Classic community on Twitch was incredibly supportive. And then all of a sudden, whenever the game actually came out, it was just tons of hate. I felt miserable. I, I, I hated, like I literally, like during that time, I hated waking up. I hated it. I've never in my life have I, have I hated getting up and then going and turning on my stream. I'd never felt that before. It was miserable. And then what happened is Asmin, Asmin takes a break. I'm at the point where I'm like, I'm like, I need a break. I'm like, well, if Asmin's taking a break, I can't take a break. I just tried to tough it out. And I was miserable for months. I was absolutely miserable. And people, maybe they wouldn't see it on stream. Maybe they would, I don't know. But I, I feel like my, I, I felt like my, my demeanor uh, on stream changed. I, I actually feel like my demeanor, because uh, I, I felt like I couldn't be funny. I felt, I kind of talked about it before. Like, oh, I'm in the wow section, can't make any jokes. I couldn't make jokes. I couldn't be funny. I couldn't like, I, I, like, I felt like my personality was muted. It felt, it felt terrible. I'd never felt that way about streaming. Again, this goes back to what I was saying earlier about like how I dwell on stuff, right? And I think about this stuff a lot, but like, I, I, I kind of feel the need to like, I don't know, I just feel like sharing it. The, the, the hate has got to stop. It's something that like this, this stuff wears down on people. And, and if you see people hating on streamers and just people in general, if you see people being like negative and toxic and this kind of stuff, like just, you gotta push these guys away. Like this is not like, it's it's not good. Like freaking weird champ them, whatever it is, right? It's not good. You can't take on everything. You're not invincible. So it's like, why do you care what one person says? Why do you care what this guy says? Why do you care what that guy says? And it's like, look, it's it's not about that. It's it's about what a thousand of those say. Oh, you know what's worse is whenever that's happening and you feel like people don't have your back. That that's what makes it even worse. The problem is, is like I I, I didn't I didn't really I wasn't planning on talking about this today. Uh, I just it just kind of happened. But it won't stop. Sure, it won't stop. But like a nice comment or something that's like defending somebody from from people being negative and toxic or whatever, it it does add up and it goes a long way.